Now, her, her key complaint is all around the chin. And what she's been pointing out is the relative dominance of this fat pad here relative to her chin. So she touched that here. Now we can't, we've already talked about this off camera, but she doesn't really want to go down the fat dissolving route mm -hmm. or surgery. And what can we do with dermal fillers? Now, understanding that the general principle is about this competition. We have a competition going on between here and here. We can look at a chin and decide. The chin is interesting because it's the only part of your face that goes up as you get older. And that's because your mentalis muscle, you can see it inserted there yeah. into the surface and it's attached on the bone here. And every time she expresses, it pulls that up. And so her chin will rotate higher as she gets mm -hmm. older. So you can see what she perceives from the side is this, this curve of the jawline that is actually increasing as it gets more anterior. So what jawlines ideally are is a gentle curve in the female. I know a lot of people are creating these razor sharp ones, but this, it's a masculine jawline. I think it's kind of like adolescent men look like that. Mm. Um, I know it might be fashionable, but I don't think it's typical for a female to have a completely straight jawline. It's, it, I can see why it's beautiful, but I, I would definitely hesitate to do that on your face. Um, and that's actually because what Samantha said earlier, if you look at her overall type of beauty, I think of faces that you, you, you basically, it's basically based on, it's basically based on facial shape. Are you a round, rounder face, which is more baby face beauty or more elongated and more statuesque? So you're more statuesque, yeah, yeah. longer face. Um, rounder faces, you end up treating chins and longer faces, more often you're treating cheeks. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we want to make the chin, the cherry on the bottom, I call it. A beautiful face has to have this apex where you're presenting the face of the world. And if mm -hmm. the apex slips, it becomes too round. And I think that's partly what she will be experiencing as this is now dominating. This is competing with the, with the low point on her chin. Mm -hmm. So when this is lower and this is higher, you become less harsh shaped. Yeah. So I need to think of anything I can do that would move her even a millimeter closer to making her chin the dominant part of the lower face. Mm -hmm. And she does have this other thing which is worth discussing, which is you don't close your mouth very easily. Yeah. But the real, the real battle here is if I can get this, see how, if you watch how the angle, if you're following it down, it suddenly has a kicker up here. That, that's our area where we might be able to make the biggest difference. Uh, the most important anatomy with the chin on these two blood vessels, the mental and the submental artery. Mm -hmm. Submental comes off the, I think it comes off the facial, but I think the facial comes up here and then the submental branches off from it. And then it curls up round and supplies anterior of the chin. And it can be very close to the bone as it enters the face. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be on, supposed to be in the fat, but you will ultrasonographers love finding vessels on the bone and if they find one that goes on social media and everyone's like oh. this is um so there's that vessel and then the mental mm -hmm. artery which is about here in terms of what we're doing as I said, we said at the beginning we're trying to resist some of the movement of mentalis pulling up mm -hmm. so i want to be injecting in a way that stabilizes that muscle and just gives a little bit more volume the thing that's different with her is i also want to add a little bit of chin length. I, I, I want her, because she has a relatively small chin compared with the other features, I, ju I want to add just a little bit, like half five millimeters of length to her chin and stabilize it. If I can do all of that, it's going to make this look relatively smaller. Yeah. And that's her biggest gripe. Mm -hmm. I quite like where it's most mobile to use on the bone injections because I think it's more stable. It makes sense to me that, like, in the ocean, waves, you've heard this analogy before, mm. stop me, but it's, <laughs> waves on the surface are much more, much more choppy. So if I'm deep, it should be more stable. Yeah. And then the other thing would, is that laterally, I might, because I quite, when I'm parallel, it's quite hard injecting all the way along here. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather use a cannula yeah. and add a bit of, if I need to add a bit of depth that way. Mm -hmm. But I start with def definition, because it's a defining point of the face, like the gonial angle of the cheek, I start with that. And then I fill in the gap between never start here because you may find this won't move as much and you actually make it look worse. Mm -hmm. So I want to want to do that with her chin. Yeah. And then if I need to fill the space. Mm -hmm. So one last recap on the aesthetics of chins. So chins, low point of the face, they should be the same width as the nose or the intercanthal distance. They should be projected no more than to the nasion from the side. 
So her chin is in all proportions on the small side. Maybe not width twice, could be slightly longer, but it's, it's a little bit short and a little bit recessed, which is great because I get to change that yeah. and then bring it into alignment. Mm -hmm. um, you must constantly be thinking about three dimensions. This is what happens with the celebrities. They get it right from one dimension but they don't get it right from three dimensions and then they move their head and the perfect picture turns into something strange. Midline is safer and I'm, I'm also thinking about the aesthetics as I do it. So the two things in my mind are, how am I projecting this bone in a way that, that brings it down and out and not just out, mm -hmm. not just down. So I'm looking for the apex of the bone and I'm using what I can already see in terms of the shape of her jaw to guide me. I'm going to be on the midline because that's a safer place to inject generally. The vessels shouldn't be in the midline. Okay, so it's very easy to miss the bone in the, in the chin or end up underneath, but I found it now. So I didn't actually lose it at all, but... So I can feel with the needle tip where I am. So I made that adjustment, pulled it off mm -hmm. the anterior surface. And now I'm on the apex. Pressure here, because I don't want to push it in the wrong direction. Yeah. I've aspirated for ages. Total injection, checking for any blanching. I'm gonna change just a little bit lateral to that. Through the same entry point. Good, long respiration. Mm -hmm. Check the skin the whole way. Mm -hmm. So I went inferior to the bone there for a second to make an adjustment. So now I've projected the chin and not necessarily linked it mm -hmm. up the other stuff yet. So that's okay. I'm going to do that in the next stage. So we'll see where the mentalist pulls in here. Mm -hmm. And it's causing just a flicker of change of angle, which isolates the chin. I don't know if you can see that little. Could you just put thing. Botox in the mentalis? You could. I'm slightly worried about her not being able to close her mouth. Oh, okay, yeah. But you could. I don't think that would happen. Mm -hmm. This crossed my mind. So I'd make it a low dose at least. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do a slightly more lateral injection. So I've like, you gotta pay attention to your feelings, not just the geometry. Mm -hmm. I feel like she looks slightly stronger from the side mm -hmm. but i don't want to make her too strong no. so that that's actually made me want to say i don't want to do any more anterior projection i do a little bit more inferior mm -hmm. and uh and chill up as much as you can. So that little junction there, yeah, we can know. just blend that. I think it'll be worth doing. This is kind of cool. It might be an interesting yeah. YouTube type clip because it's not really a common indication, but what do we got in terms of vessels here? Same ones coming up here, veins that drain the face. Mm -hmm. I'll use a cannula to lessen the, the risk and I'm going across those vessels as well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel like a dangerous injection. Mm 